A bison, not anything you would ever think to be significant, but this bison is one of many animals found along the Santa Fe Trail which helped make the U.S. what it is today. This bison was one of the many strange things Susan McGuffin encountered along her journey down the Santa Fe Trail. One of the main reasons we know some of what happened along the trail is because she kept a diary of her experiences. This diary was later published as Down the Santa Fe Trail and Into Mexico, the diary of Susan Shelby McGuffin. Susan, barely 19 years old, prepares to take on the Santa Fe Trail which was a long and treacherous journey. Susan was not the girl you would ever think would take this journey, being the granddaughter of Pariah McGuffin, Kentucky's first governor. She had lived a wealthy and privileged life, and traveling was not new to her, as her family had always moved from what was considered the edge of the frontier. She moved from Pennsylvania to Tennessee, and finally Kentucky, where she met her husband, James McGuffin. James was a traitor and involved in the deal to turn over New Mexico to the U.S. He and his brother Samuel were going to Mexico to broker a deal with the Mexican governor. James and Samuel were unafraid and even decided to bring Susan along. She was ecstatic and wrote, My journal tells a story tonight different from what is ever done before. However, this expedition was not roughing it out in the wild, as one may assume. Her tent had a bed with a mattress, table, chairs, and even carpeting. She wrote notes in her journal that it was a grand affair indeed, and even went so far to call herself a wandering princess. Along with her, Samuel J and James on the journey were a few servants and her dog, Ring. Susan was not the type of woman who would ever take this journey if it wasn't comfortable for her. She often stopped to gather flowers and at points made her servant Jane do so for her. She also expressed concern for the mule driver's language, saying they didn't need to be so profane. Susan was not about to leave her bubble in society, but she couldn't leave her husband alone. She loved James very much and often referred to him as Mi Alma in her journal. While her family did always travel to the edge of the frontier, it was clear that Susan had never done an expedition like this before. While traveling, she passed a great many buffalo, and she described the creatures as very ugly, ill-shapen things with their long, shiny hair over their heads and the great hump on their backs. After traveling for several weeks, they arrived at Bent's Fort on July 26, 1846. They did not plan to stay here for long, but Susan suffered a miscarriage. Susan was devastated over the loss of her baby, saying, In a few short months, I should have been a happy mother and made the heart of a father glad. Right after her miscarriage, an Indian woman gave birth to a healthy baby at the fort. She often remarked on the mother's actions, and at one point, she says that they went to the river and bathed, and she bathed herself and the baby only a half hour give, after giving birth, and then goes on to say, No doubt many ladies in civilized life are ruined by too careful treatments during childbirth, for this custom of the heathen is not known to be disadvantaged, but it is a heathenist custom. After Susan had recovered, they left the fort on August 7, 1846. They traveled into Santa Fe, James and Samuel finally ready to negotiate with the Mexican governor. Susan described the houses she encountered as genteel pigsties and states, but tempers her initial response by saying that within these places of apparent misery, there dwells that peace of mind and contentment which princes and kings have often desired but never found. Susan had nothing to do while James and Samuel were out, so she often went to the market. There, she met a little girl younger than six. She called her my little protege and marked, remarked that she is quite conversant in all things. Just to see the true politeness and ease displayed by that child is truly amazing and would put many a mother in the U.S. to a blush. They left Santa Fe on October 7, 1846, and went to San Gabriel. While they were there, Susan got ill with a fever. In January, they left San Gabriel and headed south. In early February, Susan wondered if she would ever get home again. They were walking through the Jornada del Merto, Journey of Death, which was a waterless stretch of desert. They made it through and got to Dona Ana on February 9, 1847. Susan McGuffin was one of the first women to travel this trail. She was one of the main observers of social customs in Hispanics in New Mexico and Mexicans in Chihuahua. Because of her view as a woman, she gave insight and wrote observations that no man would have found important. Her husband, James McGuffin, also kept a journal of his experiences, but Susan's is referenced and used more in historical sightings. She was very important during our immigration era, and it changed her world too. Before the trip, she had never seen bison and or buffalo, 
And now when we look at those animals, we can remember how they, ch they were one of the many things that changed her life and the world's ideas on Hispanics and Mexicans.